Hey, let's take a look at what we're drinking today. I feel like I've been saying this a lot, but I'm really excited to be tasting this wine today. I have the 2017 vintage Pinot Noir from Hard Road to Ho Vineyards out of Lake Chelan, Washington. Now, a couple of years ago, I was working as a wine demo expert. And I was pouring at a grocery store and it was slow and I met a gentleman who used to work for these folks and we were talking wine for a good bit and on top of him saying that Eastern Washington was going to be a hotbed of great wines, the Lake Chelan AVA specifically was where a lot of great wines were being produced that no one really knew about. You know, taking his word for it, he was a nice guy. I went ahead and joined their club without ever tasting any of their wines. So this is going to be my first go and I'm glad that I can share this experience with you. So let's open it up, and see what they got. From their website, loaded with spice and mineral, like a Pinot Noir from Burgundy, but this wine is uniquely Lake Chelan in style. Grapes from two Northern Shore vineyards and four different clones, 113, 114, 115, and 777 were used in this bottling. Fruit forward with a sweet black cherry, pomegranate, and spicy flavors. The medium body is supple with notes of black tea and glacial minerals. Smooth and round with balanced acidity wrapped in light toasty oak. We elected to ferment with native yeasts in bottle without finding or filtering to express the character of the Lake Chelan Valley, about as natural as the wine can get. Excellent paired with duck, salmon, game birds, or roast chicken. From Jeb Duddick. Medium ruby colored with classic Pinot Noir notes of mulled cherries, spice, and underbrush. Before I stick my nose in this wine, I want to share a little bit of what I've read about the Lake Chelan AVA. They were formed in 2009 and are within the northern part of the Columbia Valley. So we've got high desert climate, volcanic pumice soil, and a lake that about 10, somewhere between 10 and 20,000 years ago was part of a glacier. The area benefits from what is known as the lake effect. The warm summer keeps the lake heated all throughout the fall and a little bit into the winter, allowing the grapes to hang on the vine for a little longer than they would normally, which allows the phenols to de and sugars to develop. Uh, the grapes for this were sourced 100% from the Lake Chelan area to their northern vineyards and was fermented with native yeast. So let's see what we got. The color is amazing, very pale ruby. All right, let's see how this is. Ooh. Definitely smelling wet stone. Strawberry, maybe a little bit of tobacco leaf too. There's a floral component to it as well. I want to say violet, but I'm not really sure. Almost a touch of sage as well, though the sage and tobacco might be a combined note. This is a very light Pinot. The fruit is not overpowering. It's very soft and subtle, a very refined expression, I would say. Tans are pretty active. Definitely a good amount of acid to it as well. I can still feel some tingling right around the, the back half of my cheeks. Definitely has some gooseberry uh, on the finish. And I think like a little bit of acidic tingle right at the tip of my tongue. Very good mouthfeel throughout. The, the finish is long and lingering. 
but it's mainly on kind of that, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? It's on that bitter side. And after tasting, the nose is taking on a little more of an herbaceous dominance. Second sip, the, the fruit has a little more of a length to it. You know, starts to go through the mid palate and then morphs back into that gooseberry acidic finish. Very nice umami feel. Not too much, but just enough. Definitely this wine would be great for pairing with food. The nose has just got a lot going on. Definitely my favorite part about this wine. The flavor is great, but just I could put my nose in this and just breathe for a good long while and be very happy. Getting a little more leather to it combined with the tobacco sage that I was smelling earlier. So speaking directly to all of you Pinot Noir lovers out there, this is a wine that you cannot pass up. Such a wonderful nose to it. The aromatics, I, I'm still contemplating and it's got a lot going for it when thinking about food pairings. If you're a meat eater, then probably something medium to light would be good. Chicken for a vegetarian, this with a nice paella, so vegetarian or omnivorous paella would be an excellent choice. Something with like a medium spiciness, heat to pair with what's going on in this. Uh, maybe a light pasta dish. I'm thinking primavera, something with an Alfredo sauce versus a marinara. Uh, Mediterranean fare would probably go well with this also. Um, some falafel and hummus, some baba ganoush. I think all of that would work extremely well with this, especially if you're using some high quality olive oil to mix in with your hummus. Um, so very versatile, pick this up, give it a try, see what you like about it. And if you don't like it, well, at least you tried, which is what's most important and what's really fun about wine. Give Hard Road a Ho a try. I did, and I'm extremely surprised, pleased, and stoked to be drinking more of their wines. And probably going to crack open another one after this and review that as well. As they are a winery on the shores of a lake, they lean into a boating nautical theme, and the level of wine club that I joined happened to be double dip. so I think I'm going to do that in a little bit. And also, on that same kind of note, I'll pour a little more of this off, put a cork in it, though this cork is synthetic. I'm going to throw a real cork in there, get back to you in 24 hours, and we'll see what happens with this Pinot. Probably lose a little bit of the fragrance on the nose, and that might bring it into better balance, but we'll see in about 24 hours. Right about. And we're back. True to form, it's time to double dip. Day two on both of these hard road to hoe wines. We're going to start off with the Pinot and see how a day has changed the wine. So yesterday, when I had wrapped up shooting and I was enjoying what was left in my glasses, as I was drinking the Pinot more, the white pepper notes just came out full force. Now, I don't know if that was because of a priming effect of having had a little bit of the Syrah Grenache, or if that's just a natural character of the wine that found more expression as it opened up. So we'll see how it is right now. The nose is still kept really solid, not as robust in, in herbaceousness. Very more, more balanced, I would say. The fruit is a little more present. Flavor-wise, same thing goes mid-palate. Not getting those tobacco um, 
leather esters that I was yesterday. It was This one is very more, again, well-rounded. Uh, I had said yesterday that it was strawberry that I was getting, and I think that it's still the case there, though maybe a little more um, unripened strawberry just with how the acid is in the mid-palate. I'm definitely picking up the pepper late mid-palate and through the finish. Def still have a good mouthfeel, a little bit of cloyingness or syrupiness to uh, the residual sugars, but nothing too, uh, nothing off-putting. And it's pretty nice to not have that just like overwhelming sense of white pepper drowning that out. I'm sniffing it a little more, I'm picking up a little green bell pepper to coincide with the ground white pepper. Yeah, I have to say, as of right now, it's a better wine day two than it is day one. So in order to achieve that rapidly on day one, definitely recommend a decanter. Let it breathe for, I don't know how long, I'll have to conduct that experiment on the next bottle that I purchase, but it'll go a long way towards making it immediately drinkable on its own. As we're double dipping, I'm gonna move on to the next one right about now. Definitely would recommend you pick up a bottle of this, maybe you know, again, lay it down, let it breathe, work with it to find that right balance and welcome it amongst your Pinot Noir collection. Thanks for watching.